A couple who is dealing with a dead bedroom was given this common piece of advice by their sex therapist. And guess what? It almost ruined their whole relationship. And what's worse is I bet you've heard this and maybe even tried this dangerous advice for yourself. And what was the advice that had them come running to me? Well, their therapist told them to watch porn together. Why did the therapist give them this advice and why do I think it is such crap? Well, their bedroom had gone cold. The husband was still feeling really sexual and often aroused, but he couldn't figure out a way to get his wife on board. She struggled with low libido, high sensitivity, and was easily overwhelmed. Sex was the last thing on her mind and getting into the mood felt impossible. The therapist's advice was simple. Try watching porn together to get into a sexual headspace and reignite the spark. But boy, Boy, did this go wrong. The effects of watching porn as a way of fixing your bedroom challenges can sneak up on you and fuck you over in ways that you may not expect. I'll tell you why and what to do instead. But first, we've got to understand why so many people turn to porn for help in the first place. You see, on the surface, it seems totally logical. I mean, many people watch porn to get themselves off, right? So surely if you do it together, even better, it'll get you both in the mood. Wrong. First of all, think about the kind of porn that you watch. Even beyond that, think about porn in general. Would you say that it is reflective of real sex between two normal, loving people who are not porn stars? Although porn culture would like us to believe that porn is sex, Porn is not sex, and it doesn't reflect real gratifying sex between two people. And if you're watching it to inspire you into having sex and your relationship is already on the rocks, well, viewing a bunch of unrealistic expectations probably isn't the best way to guide you back towards genuine, real, connected sex between two people. I mean, I am a white woman with a curvy body and all of the standards of beauty that most porn stars have, and porn makes me feel oh, so insecure that I could throw up. It's not exactly arousing. The most complicated thing though is that even though on some level we all know this, our brain is wired to do this like super toxic thing when we're watching this kind of content. Which brings me to my next point. I'm gonna put this simply. If every time you wanna sleep with your wife, you have to watch 20 minutes of a shredded guy with a 10 inch eggplant and abs of steel rocking his rock hard, never ending erection and railing her till the cows come home, you might start wondering how you stack up. And as for women, even worse. I mean, we're already dealing all the time with society telling us that our bodies are not good enough, thin enough, white enough, etc. Watching a woman with a surgically altered labia performatively moan and bend her body like a pretzel, it doesn't do much for the average woman's self-esteem. The truth about porn is that it makes most of us feel self-conscious. So needless to say, every time this couple watched porn together, it actually made them question whether their bodies were the problem, whether their performance was the problem, whether they were doing something wrong or not doing enough because their sex doesn't look like that. It resulted in them feeling more disconnected from each other, but not just that, also disconnected from themselves and their own sexuality. And look, we can all get hung up on unrealistic body expectations. And I know some of y'all wanna say right now in the comments, Kaylin, there's porn with a diversity of bodies. Yeah, I get it. But the best way to avoid it is to limit the amount of exposure that we have to unrealistic standards and actually relying on sex inside of other people is not the way to bring it back into ourselves. Listen, for me, the only kind of porn that does not make me feel uncomfortable is watching solo male porn. That's, that is the true fact about Caitlyn V. The only kind of porn that I watch is just a single man jacking off. And guess what? I'm married to a straight guy, so that's probably not something that he's gonna wanna watch with me. And think about it. How often do our porn preferences actually sync up with our partners anyway. What he's into is not what I'm into. This is another big reason that this advice given to this couple was so ineffective, but that's actually not the biggest reason that I'm against it. You know, porn ultimately is a solo activity and I think it's pretty much best just to keep it that way unless you and your partner already love and enjoy watching it together. Of course, when this couple came to me, they didn't have the framework, the ability to see what the problem truly was. She was blaming her insecurities on herself and he was feeling more out of touch and disconnected than ever. And on top of that, they started to feel like something was really broken if even what the therapist recommended couldn't solve the issue. In coaching, she revealed to me that she was disgusted by the kind of porn he wanted to watch. She hated looking at younger women who were thinner 
and more artificial, and she wondered if that was actually what he wanted. I mean, not to mention that she already wasn't feeling sexual. Now she's feeling disgusted by sex itself, which is worse than just uninterested. Needless to say, the distance and the pain between them only increased. Aside from all of the ways that porn can negatively affect your real sexual relationship, there's an even larger underlying issue with this advice that goes far beyond porn itself. When it comes to reigniting a stale sex life, people who don't have an advanced understanding of sexual psychology will often try to add things into the dynamic to spice things up. Add porn, add some sex toys, add some BDSM, add some role play. Hell, add a third person. It's always about adding more and more and more. And look, I am all for trying new things to spice things up. See the 300 plus videos in this channel. But if you're only focusing on additions, you're forgetting a critical part of how female sexuality actually works. Because if you're only focusing on what you can add, you're operating under the assumption that something is missing. But when it comes to women and their sexualities, it is not often about what's missing. It's about what's standing in the way. In other words, what's already here that we actually got to get rid of. Well, as much as I hate to compare women to cars, this is actually a super easy way to explain it. Just like a car, all sexuality operates on a dual control model. So there's a gas pedal, aka more, and then there's the brake pedal, aka less. Whenever you add something to the bedroom, it's like you're pushing harder on the gas. But if your foot is still on the brake, well, guess what? You're not gonna go very far. So porn falls in the category of slam on the gas. But rather than add, what if actually what we need to do is just take our other foot off of the brake. In other words, figure out what is stopping her from getting turned on in the first place. And that is what I told this couple. It was a simple question that changed everything. When I asked her what was stopping her from feeling sexually alive, the floodgates opened. She told me she was stressed at home. She told me she felt like all the responsibility to take care of the house and the kids fell on her. She told me she was stressed about her full-time job. She said she was drained by the time they got into bed every single night. She felt resentful. The daily responsibilities of life were taking up all of the space in her head. She couldn't remember the last time she had just a day to herself, a couple hours to focus on an experience of pure relaxation and pleasure. And it wasn't his fault. I mean, he's doing the best that he can but no one can go from high stress, high intensity to orgasmic, pleasured, completely relaxed and opened with ease if they're not wired that way. It's not about attraction. It's not about needing to watch naked bodies. It's not about genitals or people on camera. It's about establishing a better balance in the gas and the break, in the pleasure and the work of life. The stress of chores and chaos, the, the things that we deal with are pushing down the brakes for so many of us women, especially because we are so sensitive to that. And as much as her husband with his sexual blueprint was able to switch into gear quickly, because that's how he was wired. He was wired to see naked people and then instantly be aroused and want sex. And good for him. But she, with her energetic blueprint, required time to switch gears, to slowly remove the pressure off the brakes, to connect to her body and to him, to connect to the idea of pleasure itself in order to even want sex. And as much as they pumped the gas with porn, they were not gonna get anywhere because they were missing the underlying root at the core of the issue. Now, there are a lot of potential reasons that a woman does not have interest in sex. Just like there are a lot of potential reasons that a man is dealing with inconsistent erections. It can come down to how you are raised, past relationships, sexual trauma, a buildup of resentment, a loss of trust. It may have nothing to do with your current partner it may be all rooted in the past and previous situations. And whatever it is, I always suggest that a couple look at what is slamming on the brake before they push harder on the gas. As an aside, this is the entire foundation upon which I built my hard as you want course for men who are dealing with erectile dysfunction. It is not enough just to look at the physical body, which is where most people stop, or at the mental aspects, which is where most therapists stop. It is physical, mental, emotional, social, and relational. And that's why I built hard as you want to incorporate all of those different areas in order to help you get hard and stay hard. For this couple, that realization was a game 
changer. They took a look at how to actually eliminate stress and increase pleasure, how to feel connected, how to feel valued, supported. They took the time to clear up all of the stuff that was getting in the way and you know what they were left with? Downright filthy sex that they had been missing out on for ages. I mean, the kind of sex that you won't see in porn because it's real, because it's unique and intimate to the people who are having it. So please, if you've ever heard that porn is a good way to bring the spark back into your bedroom and that all you gotta do is watch some porn with your wife, Think of that as a dirty band-aid on top of a serious wound. It doesn't solve the problem and it might only infect it further. I'm Caitlin B. Thank you for watching. Please check out my Heart As You Want course. Link is in the description and I'll see you here next week. Bye.